Hey, good morning, everybody, and welcome to another Mortgage Coach Learning Event. Every time we do a coaching call, our focus and our goal is to have the best coaching and sales meeting every Tuesday at 9 o'clock. And every time we do an industry event like this, we just want to do the absolute best webinar learning event in the mortgage industry. That's always my goal, and that's what I strive for. My name is Dave Savage. I'm the CEO of Mortgage Coach. I urge you, if we haven't already connected on LinkedIn, Facebook, and now Twitter, uh, please connect with me. If you're on this call, you are a friend, and you're also a friend of Mortgage Coach. So make sure you like the Mortgage Coach Facebook page. On today's call, and one of the things we're experimenting with is engaging with members in Twitter. So if you want to ask questions, if you want to have comments, or you just want to share your big takeaway or quote from the call, do hashtag Mortgage Coach, and feel free to include myself, D Savage MC. So today's call is all about becoming a partner to realtors. And, and that's a you know, very carefully choice words, and it's also a pretty big hill. Most of us have a lot of casual relationships with realtors. We have people that know our names. We wave to them. Uh, many of those realtors are not the most successful realtors that are going to give us great referrals and help us achieve our financial goals. And so, so this is about taking it to another level. It's about becoming a partner. And it's about doing that with the right realtors. So a quote that I have been inspired by for about a week now and something that I really thought was relevant to this conversation is when you think about what you need to do to become a partner to realtors, it's about teaching. And mediocre teachers tell, good teachers explain, superior teachers, they demonstrate, but the best speakers inspire. And, and I think what you're going to get from this call, if you pay close attention, is you're going to get all the ammo, all the insight to be a great teacher, to come to the realtors, share insight, share wisdom around the market that will help them sell more homes, deliver better services to the home buyers and home sellers that they serve, and, and just be a great teacher who inspires. So to, to bring this wisdom, to bring this teaching to the mortgage industry, who better than Steve Harney? Uh, most of you probably know Steve's backstory, and I'm not going to steal his thunder, but this is a man who's been a realtor. This is a man who's built large real estate organizations. This is a man who currently serves the real estate industry as a leader and also has thousands of mortgage professionals that he's helping deliver insight to realtors. So, so Steve, before I bring you into the conversation, you take over and walk us through this presentation. I want to launch a quick poll because I want to see where everybody's at right now. Um, how effective, and be honest, are you at delivering valuable insight to realtors? So when you bring an idea, a news article, something that's relevant in the market, do you think you're like great at that? Do you think you're good, average, or is it just something you don't even do? You, you just that, That's a foreign concept of bringing valuable insight to realtors. Uh, if you could answer this quickly. If uh, you're new to my uh, to a mortgage coach coaching call, know that I want 70% of you to vote. Right now, about 50% of you to voted. That's how I get something that's statistically relevant. It will help Steve and I deliver some insight and some value to this call. Steve, any guesses on how folks are going to vote on this uh, poll question to kick off our call? I, I I hope I hope that they realized already that that's so very important, and I hope they're at least getting good with the the you know goal to be great for those that aren't great yet but it's going to be interesting to see what actually takes place well the results are in and again kudos to everybody for not just saying I'm great uh, a lot of folks almost 30 percent said good too many said average very small percentage not at all uh, so Steve I, my takeaway is lots of opportunity for everybody to take it to a level of great yeah, that's exactly what we, you know. We're getting together to try to help them accomplish that because I think we have some great information for them, and I know I've been around enough to know what the the agents are really looking for. So I think we can help in a big way today on that. Yeah, no, no doubt. So I also want everybody to know Steve Harney's Twitter um, name at Steve Harney. Uh, please engage with us, ask us questions, tell us what your biggest takeaway is. And I hope uh, first takeaway everybody's going to take how you deliver insight from a level of good to a level of great. So with that said, um, Steve, I'm going to make you the presenter. 
feel free to share your desktop and walk us through some teachings on how we can all partner with Realtors better. Okay. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I hope everyone can see the screen so there's no challenge as far as that's concerned. The, thumbs uh, up. Thumbs up. There we go. Um, I really appreciate Dave introducing me to everyone that's on the webinar today, and I really loved uh, his flowering words at the beginning. Um, really what this is about, ladies and gentlemen, you know, we're all here to some degree for the money. The, uh, we have to pay the bills. We have to keep a you know, roof over our family's heads. We have to put food on our tables, and I understand that. But I hope that the vast majority of people in the call is not just about the money. It's about the mission of what we can accomplish. After the last few years, um, trust has been a very, become a very valuable commodity. And what the consumer is really looking for is the best real estate people in the marketplace aligning themselves with the best mortgage people in the marketplace so that their experience in purchasing a home uh, is something that they can look forward to and can have trust in. Um, and that's what today's call about, Hel what today's call is about, helping you really understand what the, the realtor needs from you and how you can really build that strong relationship. Now, to begin with, I just want everyone to know, like, the big question is, well, how is the purchase money market going to do moving forward? Where is the market going? Probably the person that uh, kind of capsulized that in one quote was the chief economist at Freddie Mac when he said, we expect single-family home sales and housing stocks to be at the highest level since 2007. We're going to have the best year in real estate since 2007. I can tell you that I have the great honor of having uh, listed as clients of mine on the real estate side. If you looked at the top 25 companies in the country, as far as volume is concerned, I think 17 of them are my clients. And 201, everyone is looking as 2014, is a very, very powerful year for all of us. Where even though 2012 and 2013 were good and the, the market's coming back and everyone knows that, many people believe that 2014 is going to be a tremendous breakout year. What does that mean to us? We're on the turn. We're turning from an okay market, a recovering market, into we, what we believe in 2014 is going to be a full-blown market. Now, if you know anything about racing, whether you race cars or motorcycles, you know that when you're going into the turn, you don't hit the brake. You do take your foot off the gas. But every great driver is taught that halfway through that turn to hit the gas hard. Not to be nervous about going around that turn, but when they hit the halfway point, to hit the gas hard. The reason they do that is that will pull them through the rest of the turn and let them get to the next straightaway at full speed. One of the purposes of what Dave and Mortgage Cuts does, and he asked me to help you accomplish today in today's uh, webinar, is to make sure you have that foot very solidly on the gas so that when you hit that next straightaway, you are so far in front of your competition that not only can't they catch you, Dave doesn't even want them to be able to see you. So as this market is turning to a very, very powerfully strong market, we want you to hit the gas hard right now. There are only two speeds in our industry, win or lose. Either you become that trusted partner of the real estate, the real estate agent, or you don't. Someone else does. And what we're suggesting very strongly right now is that you almost rip the brake out of that car and hit it hard. We're on the middle of the turn. Go all out right now. Now, who am I to be able to say that? They've you know, talked about it a little bit. Let me give you a little bit. That's a picture of me. Uh, I do speak quite often around the country. I've appeared on Fox Business News. I'm quoted in you know, a zillion papers across the, the, um, the nation. Um, but I started out as an agent. I was an agent for eight years. The last seven of those eight years, I was the top agent in my county. I went on to run a real estate office for a, a big brand. Uh, that office became the second most productive office in the entire country. Uh, we never could beat Beverly Hills, no matter how hard we tried. 
Then I went to open my own real estate company, which we grew to 13 offices and 550 agents. I sold that company a couple of years ago. Now, the reason I'm giving you that biography is not to talk about my past, but to let you know that I know what or, or what are the things that agents are concerned about and when they're concerned about them and how we can best help them. Because the trick, not the trick, but the answer to you really forming great partnerships is making sure that you understand what the realtor needs from you and being able to supply that. I know though that those answers. I'm in front of agents all the time. Real, I've not been in real estate for 35 years. Real estate's been in me for 35 years. So I have a unique perspective from the realtor side of it to help you understand what they need, when they need it, and how you can best apply it to them. The goals of today's webinar can be broken down to three things. I want you to learn how to identify the true producers among the agents in your market. Don't waste any time with the non-producers. Number two, learn how to utilize proven methods in approaching these producers and building rapport. And number three, learn how to create the loan office or realtor relationship that lasts a lifetime. This isn't going to be about building a database of 200 agents someplace in your Mac or your PC. This is going to be about having 10, 12, 20 great agents in your smartphone. And the reason they're in your smartphone is every time they have a, a mortgage question, every time one of their buyers have a mortgage question, they contact you immediately. So not about how many realtors you get in front of, it's how many realtors, productive realtors, you build strong relationships with. Let's start with number one. To begin with, we have to understand that just like there's an 80-20 rule in all of business, meaning 20% of the people do about 80% of the work, in real estate it's actually a little bit more condensed than that. The last numbers available show that 93% of the houses sold in this country are sold by 7% of the agents. Let's say that again. 93% of the homes sold in this country are sold by 7% of the agents. So one of the first things you have to do is identify the groupings of agents and make sure that you're dealing with the people that can actually help you build your business when you help them build yours. So let's break into five groups. We're going to start with Danny Doolittle. Danny Doolittle is a person you might even like. Gives you all the time in the world. We'll go to lunch with you, go to coffee with you. When you come to the office, he's in the office. He'll bring you around. He'll pat you on the back. And the reason he has all the time to do all these things with you is because he does no business at all. He'll never refer a deal to you because he never did a deal. He might drive a nice car. He might dress nice. He might be married to someone who has a pretty good job. But he himself, or whether it's a, a man or a woman, they can't help you get business because they can't figure out how to get business themselves. But they're usually very well known in the office. And sometimes I've seen so many loan officers say, well, at least he's nice to me. At least he, you know, spend time with me. Spending time with him does two things. It wastes whatever time you have in, during that interaction. And number two, it makes the other agents in the office say, why is he hanging out with the loser guy? <laughs> Second group person you want to stay away from is Nancy New Agent. Not that they're not nice people, but remember, anywhere from 60 to 70% of the people who start the business aren't in the business again in six months, aren't in the business any longer in six months. So spending a lot of time with new agents, the normal new agent, makes no sense at all. So you have to take that to those two groups, and then and when you're dealing with your realtors, look them square in the face and say, wait a second, maybe the reason this person is not giving me any loans is they're not doing any loans, not doing any deals. And even though Nancy New Agent will be all over you and think you're the world and love what you can teach them, they might be around in 60 days. Who you're looking to get in front of, we can break into three categories. Category number one, that new agent that's special. We like to call them Ricky Rising Star, that very special agent. They're brand new in the business, but there's just something about them. They're working hard. You see them at the open houses. You see them bringing. They're asking you smart questions. They're trying to figure out how to really absorb information, but you know that when you teach them something, they're applying it. That's a great lead. That's the future superstar. The good news is if you get Uden with Ricky Rising Star as he's first building his business and you help him build his business, 
you will be his lifelong mortgage partner. The other person I want you to take a look for is Tommy Tima. He's the heart and soul of a real estate office. Usually, you know, on a couple of years, has, you know, 15, 20 years experience. Really nice person, but does business. The way to really see this, you know, find this person, the, he's the guy or she's the guy, it could be a man or a woman, that kind of coordinates like the Habitat for Humanity or the charitable events or the collecting food at Thanksgiving or collecting toys for tots with the Marines during the holiday season. They get involved in everything that the office does, that the company does. And they're kind of like the backbone or the heart of that office. The reason they do a lot of business, they're really good people. They've been around, they know what they're doing, and people trust them. They're also a great referral source because when they tell one of their buyers that they should use you as a mortgage person, that buyer's going to listen. Of course, again, they've built a reputation, not of being a superstar agent, but being a solid agent that they can trust. Now, of course, everyone wants to know, well, how do we get in with Sarah Superstar and her team? That's the agent that's doing the vast majority of the business. Sometimes she might come off what we believe to be arrogant. It's not arrogance in most cases. Are there arrogant real estate uh, agents? Definitely. Just like there are some arrogant mortgage professionals. But for the most part, Sarah Superstar is not arrogant. They are focused. And sometimes that real keen focus can come off a little bit as, listen, just leave me alone right now. It might come as arrogance. You want not the arrogant agent, but you want the focused agent. Because the one thing powerful about that agent, they know how to refer. They know how to do business, and they want a partners around their deal. They want you to be a partner in the process once you earn that right. They know the importance of controlling the deal, and part of controlling the deal is controlling the referrals, whether it be to an attorney, if you have attorneys in your marketplace, or the uh, mortgage entity. Now, how do you make contact with these people? How do you get that? And that's number two. How do you utilize proven methods in approaching these producers and building rapport with them? We're going to make it pretty simple. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what they want you to do. They want you to help them help buyers make a decision. In the world today, there's a lot of confusion, tremendous amount of confusion. You could read one thing at one minute, and then on the same newspaper three pages later, you could read a, a headline that says, sounds like it says the exact opposite of the housing headline on the front cover. Our price is going up, our price is going down. It's all according to what paper you read and what day of the week you read that paper. Is it a good time to buy or not a good time to buy? Is what the Fed said yesterday, what, what effect is that going to have? There's a lot of confusion out there, and the challenge is confusion leads to indecision. It's easier for a buyer to step back and not decide because they're a little confused and a little afraid. That confusion creates fear. What we have to help the agents with is getting that confusion out, that indecision away. Take that fear away. And what we need to do is help them build their business. If you pick the right realtor partners, people who understand that loyalty is a two-way street, people truly looking for a trusted advisor as a mortgage person for their buyers, because they're a trusted advisor to their buyers on the real estate side. If you find that right person, and there's plenty of them, then help them build their business. They'll understand, again, that loyalty is a two-way street, and they'll help you build yours. So let's get into, like, what are the things that are challenging agents right now? And I'm going to take a little bit of a step back. We're going to talk about prices for a little bit, but I want to take a step back here. We have a product called uh, Keeping Current Matters, which is known as KCM in the industry. A lot of you might read the KCM blog where we go directly to agents with it. We have over 6,000 agents that subscribe to the service and use it every single day. We, on a monthly basis, give to agents what they tell us they need. Those 6,000 agents come to us and say, hey, listen, Steve, you know what we need right now? You know what the challenges in the market are right now? If you can give us some simple information on this, 
we'd really appreciate it. The only thing is I can't get to a million agents. And that's why I'm on this webinar. There are agents in your marketplace that I can't just get to. But you can. There are top agents in your market that need help right now. And you're there sitting with them. So let's go over some of the things I give to agents that I also want you to have the power to give to agents. When they're talking about prices, realize that every single person, whether it be a buyer or a seller, and ladies and gentlemen, let's make sure we understand that almost every seller becomes a buyer the minute they sell their house. Very few people that sell a house don't buy another house. Now, there's equity challenges right now, so they're going to need a mortgage. Sometimes, even if they're moving down, they're going to need a mortgage. But definitely, if they're moving up, they're going to need a mortgage. So helping that agent get those listings will create more buyers because everyone else sells, almost everyone else sells would be a buyer. And every one of those listings will attract more buyers to it. So getting the pricing right is important. But the challenge we have is that as soon as somebody decides to sell the house or buy a house, they go into what we know as a hypersensitive state of awareness. They start reading everything they can possibly find. They start listening to uh, watching CNN news for the housing reports. They start listening to NPR on the radio every morning for the housing report. They start reading the Wall Street Journal or the Washington Post or the San Francisco Chronicle for the housing information. They just want that more and more and more. Now the challenge is with all that noise out there, they're not really sure what it all means. If they hear the prices are up across the country at 8% and you're living in New York right now where I am, well our prices aren't up 8%. So we have to be able to explain to them what, help the agents explain to the, the buyers and sellers what's really taking place with prices. So once a quarter we give them this. We go, go to the FHFA report and we break it down for them in a very simple visual. So when the homeowner says, well, I heard on CNN last night that prices are up 8.4% in the country. Well, they are, but that doesn't mean in every single region of the country. If you're on the West Coast, you're really lucky right now. Your prices are skyrocketing. If you live where I live, as I was teasing before in New York, not so much. But giving the agents just this visual that they could share at their listing presentations and with their buyers can give them a better understand, help them give the agent, uh, the uh, buyer or seller, a better understanding of what's taking place in the market right now. Dave said it beautifully right from the beginning. That's why I love doing things with mortgage coach. Anyone that's on this call that's already a mortgage coach, you know, consumer, you know, you have the edge. You, Dave does some great things for you. I love doing webinars with Dave because he thinks like I think. We should be educating the buyer. We should be educating the agent so they can educate the buyer better. This is what we do also here at KCM. And what we want to give you the right to do as a bridge builder, which is our mortgage service today. But if you take a look at it across the board here, you can see that, all right, well, in different parts of the country, it goes in different ways. So if a buyer in New York is thinking about selling and moving to California, well, waiting makes no sense because they're sitting on an asset that is appreciating slowly, waiting to buy an asset that's appreciating rapidly. Those are the type of things that you can help agents with. We also let the agents see what it is breaking down right to the state. They can get the local information and the hyperlocal information right from their MLS. They just don't know how to combat what the consumer hears, again, on CNN and NPR or what they read in the paper. This, we help them with that piece of it. And I left it up there for a few seconds so you can take a look. You know, prices across the whole country, every single green state, means their prices are up to some degree. There's no red states, there's no negatives. Now some people might argue, and a buyer might argue, well I think we're going right to another balloon. Look at prices are way up, I'm reading the prices are way up. We might be heading to another bus, and if we're heading to another bus, this is not the time for me to buy. So I'd like to give them information, I'd like to give the agents, I want you to be able to give your ag agents information to combat those objections. So I love this. CoreLogic just came out saying, well, what are pr the price changes since the 2005 to 2007 peaks? And we can see the vast majority of the country is still undervalued compared to those peaks. We're not heading for the next bubble. 
in the states in the middle of the country, the Texases, the Oklahomans, the Colorados, that didn't skyrocket up and didn't come crashing down, they went normal. So they're even a little bit ahead of their 2005 and 2007 prices. But the rest of the country where prices went crazy, we haven't even caught those numbers yet. So everyone calm down a little bit. We're not heading toward that other bubble. And the market adjusts. Here's another map we love to give them. Not the year-over-year -year price reports. That's what everyone wants to talk about. Well, this time of year, going through you know, the winter months, all prices slow down a little bit because demand slows down a little bit. So it's not like if a person waits from now until March that they're going to get another 10% for their house. That's not going to work. But the agent needs to know, again, taking what Dave said, how to educate that consumer in a real nice, simple way. Simply and effectively say, listen, I know prices are up dependent on which pricing index you can look at, anywhere from 8 to 12%. But understand that pace of appreciation is slowing across the whole country. And in some parts of the country, not that we're projecting depreciation going forward, but it's actually slowing that it's not as high as even the month before. During the winter months, everything slows down a little bit. But saying that, if you're a realtor, to a homeowner, it sounds like you're just trying to beat them up about the price to make a quick deal. Educating the homeowner with the heart of a teacher, with visuals proving your points, can establish that agent as the market expert, someone that buyer or seller can trust. And ladies and gentlemen, that's so important to you on the mortgage side. Because if that agent becomes that trusted advisor, if that consumer says, you know what, this agent knows what they're talking about, I'm real comfortable with what they're telling us, they back things up, then they're going to be comfortable when that agent says, and as far as the mortgage is concerned, I'd like you to talk to Harry. Harry's really good as a person I've been working with for a while. If you help them build that rep as that trusted advisor, that market expert, then when it comes to referring you, they're already there. And some things that agents are always worried about that they can't get out of the MLS is, well, what's good to moving forward? So we work with them, and we want to give you this information. We want to empower you, every single person on this webinar, with the same information we have that we give to agents to help them build their business. Because, again, if you pick the right agent, if you help them build their business, they'll help you build yours. So going forward, well, you know, some, some people will guess prices are going to go up. Some people will be real pessimistic and guess prices are going to go down. Well, we do a lot of research. I have a research team here in New York. We like looking at the Home Price Expectation Survey. It's a nationwide panel over 100 economists, real estate experts, and investment and market strategists. 107 were surveyed in the last report. These are people, you know, the chief economist at Mooney's, uh, Mooney'sEconomy.com. People at Harvard University, the Joint Center of um, Housing Studies. The um, Lawrence Young, the chief economist at NAR. Hundred of the leading people in the real estate industry. And this is what they do. They ask them once a quarter, where do you think prices are going? They don't take one person's opinion. What they do is they take oh, all 107 people's opinion and mash it together. The scientific principle is if I put a jar of jelly beans in front of an audience of 100 people and ask them to guess how many beans are in the jar, some are going to guess way high, some are going to guess way low. But if I average out all 100 answers, I'm going to come really, really close to the number of beans in that jar. Same thing here. Some experts are going to be very optimistic, some are going to be pessimistic. But if we average out all of their opinions and mash it into one number, we're going to be real close to what's going to happen. And this is what they say is going to happen over the next couple of years. Normal appreciation in this country before the bubble was about 3.6%. So what are they saying? They're saying that the pendulum still has to swing back to the positive. It went too far negative. It swings back to the positive in 2014. Prices are not going to rise at that double-digit number that they did in parts of the country this year. 
but it's still going to be higher than what the historical numbers are. And then over the next couple of years, we're going to get back to a normalized, historically accurate market. Now, when a buyer is looking at this, remember, now, I'm not saying a buyer isn't afraid of how large those green lines, how long those green lines are. But really, what is a buyer worried about? People buy houses not for the money. They buy houses for the kids. Make sure the kids get a good education, their family's safe. Every survey shows those as number one and number two. Number three always comes in the same. They want more elbow room. Number four, they want control over that elbow room. They don't want a landlord telling them what colors they can paint their children's room or whether or not they can put a play set in the backyard. Money doesn't come into play until reason number five in every, each one of these surveys. When they say that, well, one of the reasons we want to buy a house is paying rent is stupid. But money, after the last couple of years, at least in the back of every one of their heads. But they're not really worried as much as how tall those green bars are. They just want to know that the people are saying they're not going to be red going forward. And this is a good way to help them with that. As a matter of fact, we do a bunch of slides on every one of those that you can bring to your agents and have them put in their Facebook or in their blogs, that one size 8 by 10 cards. We make them very visually appealing so you can help your agents market what's taking place and what's about to take place. And in the last survey, if we looked at pre-bubble trend numbers, meaning if there was no up and down, and we just took a trend line for the 20 years prior to 2000, prices would still be up about 23.7% by 2018. The bulls of that group of 107, the top 25%, the most optimistic think that price could be as high as 40% over the next couple of years. All projections added together were at 28%. And even the bears, the most negative quarter, the bottom 25%, even the bears think that we're going to see almost a 70% appreciation between now and 2018. Having this information to share with their buyers, either when they're sitting at a presentation or when they're advertising to get more appointments, or change, or, or help people understand what's really taking place, kind of separating the noise and giving them the facts. This is the type of information agents eat up. And again, we have over 6,000 that we, we personally deal with. They tell us what they need. We get our research team to work on it, and we give it to them. Let's go to point number three. Learn how to create loan offers and realtor relationships that last a lifetime. You can't have a better year than the year we're heading into for that. Because what's going to take place in 2014, there's going to be a load of buyers, ladies and gentlemen. We're telling every single agent across the country to load up on listings, load up on them. We make the analogy it's going to be a shoe store. There are going to be people all over your store. There's going to be a line out the door around the block this spring. Make sure you load the inventory in that shoe store. Make sure you have every single size and every single color and every single style. We're going to get bombarded. But what are going to be the question marks for those buyers? Well, mortgaging. What's taking place? What did what happened yesterday? What impact does that have? Real estate agents, and I, I'm not making fun of my own. I've been in the business 35 years. The vast majority of my closest friends are in the real estate business. But it's a full-time job just making sure you keep abreast of that business. And there are so many changes, and everyone on this, I know I'm preaching to the choir here, everyone on this uh, webinar knows the changes that are taking place in the mortgage industry. You have that power now. We could just take a look at where interest rates were so far in 2013, a 30-year fixed rate according to the Federal Reserve. They were way down low, about 3.5% for the first third of the year. Then just the conversation that there might be tapering of bond purchases in September, just the conversation of that drove interest rates up this summer over a full percentage point. Do you understand how to explain that? You have an in right now. Agents are confused right now about the, what's taking place and the, the whole mortgage uh, compartment. 
Let's make sure that we give you simple, easy ways. Now, the challenge we might have is the curse of knowledge. You know it so well, it's hard for you to explain it because you don't understand why they don't understand it. We break it down to very simple um, visuals that not only can agents use to learn what's happening, but to teach the buyer a little bit. Now, I know that it would be better if you sat with the buyer, but here's the challenge we have, ladies and gentlemen. For all of history, nobody goes at night, uh, goes to sleep at night, and dreams about having the perfect lakeside mortgage. Nobody thinks about, you know, when they get married that they really what they're looking for is their first doll mortgage. They think about the house first. They're going to be in front of that realtor, and if you can arm that realtor, it'll make them understand that they have to buy now, not later. You're helping that realtor make more business. Let them understand that really all of the bond, don't worry about the candlesticks and all that. That's the, to a degree that's important, and you're going to get some agents that can understand that. But let's keep it simple. The bond purchase is a government stimulus package for the housing industry. When they taper, at which they announced yesterday they're going to begin to, they're diminishing or reducing that government stimulus package. On the talk of that happening over the summer, interest rates went up a full percentage point. So we know that going forward, interest rates are probably going to increase. Of course, the government is pulling back on the stimulus. I like to give them you know, numbers, because this is updated every single month, so I have updated for you to give to your agents every single month, and I think these numbers are going to be much higher next month. But in the last month, Fannie Mae, the National Association of Realtors, Freddie Mac, and Mortgage Bank Association, all projected interest rates this time next year are going to be close to or over 5%. You give this type of information to uh, an agent that they can share with their buyers at their buyer appointments, you're the hero. You're the person that's allowing them to understand what's taking place and not only allow them to understand it, but explain it in a nice way. And I like to throw in some things. Just recently, the chief economist of Fannie Mae goes, where are we going to end? The quote that uh, Duncan gave was, I don't think the Fed ultimately would be troubled with a 6.5% mortgage rate. Now, that was pretty interesting, especially since it came three days before or four days before the chief economist at Freddie Mac said, well, at today's housing prices and income levels, mortgage rates would have to be nearly 7% before the U.S. medium-priced home would be unaffordable to a family making a median income in most parts of the country. So we have two government officials within days of one another saying that, you know what, we don't really have to worry until price, the interest rates get up to 65 to 7%. Now, the fact that they both came out within days of one another saying that leads me to believe that they were probably invited to a meeting I wasn't invited to. And that kind of discussion was had. But even if we don't get crazy with those numbers, though I think we should share those numbers, let's just take a look if prices didn't go up and interest rates just went from about 4.3%, which they were last week, to 5.3% next year, what they're projected to do. On a $250,000 mortgage, that buyer now is paying an extra $151 a month by waiting. Give this type of information to your realtor partners that they can share either at a live presentation or on Facebook or on their blog or on their newsletter. If you are supplying the content for them to get more deals and close more deals, guess what? They see you as that valuable resource that they need to build their business. And again, if you pick the right type of people to partner with, they'll understand that that loyalty is a two-way street. And if interest rates go up, we try to break it down. Now, we did one here with a house at $400,000. We broke it down to $200,000, $400,000, all the way up. I'm just giving you one here as an example. Because a lot of people shop, and the agents know this, they shop a mortgage payment. They want to keep the mortgage rate around $2,000. Well, as interest rates go up, if they want to keep that mortgage payment around $2,000, they're going to have to buy less of a house. 
These are the type of things that you can empower your agents with in order for them to sit with buyers and sellers and help them make better decisions. There are some bridge builders, people who use our KCM product to build relationships with their realtors that say their realtors are dependent upon them to get this information out. Talk about a nice situation. And as interest rates go up, what did our agents tell us? Hey, as interest rates go up, people are complaining. They wish they got the three and a half. They wish it was four and a half percent. A new study just came out today, ladies and gentlemen, that 83% of the people think that a normal interest rate is under 5%. 83% of people think a normal interest rate is under That's not normal. So we gave them something along these lines, even as this, this question was building. Well, if you took a $250,000 mortgage over the last 30 years, let's take a look in principal interest what you would have paid for that same $250,000. Because what we do is we anticipate what is going to be the challenge, and in many cases the agents give us the challenge. Here's the objection I need to overcome right now, Steve. Help us do that. And we create things like that. What's going to be said all over the papers is already starting. Well, when interest rates go up, prices are going to come down. That's going to put buyers on the sideline. If they keep on reading that, ladies and gentlemen, here are the last four times interest rates dramatically increased over the last 30 years. Down below it is the real estate value change during that period, time period. So there's thinking that because interest rates go up and demand now has to get shrunken and they have to buy less of a house, that all of a sudden prices are going to go down, so I should sit and wait before I buy for prices to come down? Well, there's no historical proof of that. As a matter of fact, there's historical evidence of the exact opposite. And we want the agents, we want to help the agents explain to the buyer. And while you're waiting, let's understand what happens with rents. What we try to do today is show you some of the information that we share with agents that depend on us to really help them overcome the objections of their buyers and sellers. We want you to have that same power. We want you to have a relationship with your agents the same way we have a relationship with our clients. Now, I set out three goals today. You know you want the Sarah Superstar, the Tommy Teamer, if you can identify the Ricky Rising stuff. You know that what the agents need most right now is some great information to overcome the objections they're getting right now. And how do you build long-term relationships? By making sure on a monthly basis, because that's when we give it to you, ladies and gentlemen, just like we give it to our agents. Every single month, we do another whole presentation and we hand them all the information they need. We want you to have that power to meet with your agents. Give them the information we can supply to you. Let them see you as that not only the trusted advisor, but the resource or the information to make them better educators when they're sitting in front of the buyers and sellers. We give you the opportunity to help them get all the great graphs and charts we just showed you and make it mobile. Imagine how important that would be this holiday season when they're in, friends of, in front of friends and families you don't see all during the year. If a question of real estate comes up, and we know this, this holiday season, real estate is going to be a prime subject matter. They could pull out off their side, off their hip, their smartphone, or out of their pocketbook and say, let me show you a couple of things. What does that do to the agent? As I showed you throughout this whole presentation, we believe that strong visuals really impacting the, the market is what makes a difference. I worked together with Matt Dollinger. Matt Dollinger was a coach of agents in uh, the, one of the largest real estate companies in the city of Chicago. He was a mentor and coach for a lot of years. He went on to Trulia to become the vice president of uh, mortgage share broker services for Trulia, a real thought leader in the industry, a very, very bright young guy. He works with us to not only get you the information, to, but to help you learn how to use that information. So bottom line, ladies and gentlemen, we have a program called Bridge Builders. The people on this call, if you like what you saw, if you think that what you just saw could help you build realtor relationships, 
what we do is we give you the monthly KCM, the same information that our 6,000 subscribers depend on. We give it to you with the rights to share it with all your real estate partners. You now become the trusted source, not us. We can do exclusive quarterly strategy calls for all the members that are bridge builders. I get on once a quarter and say, this is what agents are going to be thinking about over the next 90 days. This is what you have to prepare for them over the next 90 days. This is what you have to look out for over the next 90 days. And we handle questions and answers, and I personally handle those strategy calls. We give you four getting started videos. We talked a little bit about the five different types of people. We didn't have the time in this webinar to really break it down to how to get to that Sarah Superstar, how to use her team, maybe her buying agent, to get in the back door of working with that team. But we have four starting getting started videos that breaks down a lot of what we covered today in much further detail. And then we do open agent webinars throughout the year that you could bring your group to. If you'd be interested, if, if you're looking to build your purchase money business next year, and if you want to either build realtor relationships or enhance your realtor relationships, we give you all of this for $9.95 a year. That's the total annual cost. Less than $100 a month, you now are loaded with information that the um, agents in your marketplace need desperately. This is the actual dashboard. If you become a member, we break down the, the presentation. We go ahead and give it to you in a PDF, a PowerPoint, JPEGs. So you can get it on their smartphones, audios. We, we transcribe everything I say on a monthly basis. The same great information, again, that we share with our 6,000 subscribers, you now have that same information to share with all the real estate partners in your marketplace. If you think that makes sense to you, Go to www.bridgebuilderskcm.com. Again, www.bridgebuilderskcm.com. And you can join our team. It's your decision. Next year, last year was good. Next year is going to at least be better. But if you want the best year you can have, that's what you want to do. And real quick at the end here, I just want to let you know what you're really looking to do is build very special agent relationships. I want to give you two examples. F.L. Swolinski is a realtor, one of the top realtors in the Washington, D.C. area. He also happens to be an attorney. He doesn't, do, he doesn't practice law, but he's a, he's a realtor. I have not found any, another source for current industry information, for instance, so clearly and cleanly. It has contributed tremendously to my client's awareness of the real estate environment and to my career success. That's the type of relationship you can build. And sometimes it, you want it to be personal. That's really when you have them in your smartphone and they really depend on you. Here's Brett Boger. After seven years leading Keller Williams' offices, I've transitioned towards a partnership with my beautiful wife. Last night we used the KCM info for a relocation piece which landed us a listing and a sale lead this morning. All things you showed us and we implemented. And here's a part that touched our hearts. Here's a family photo we put together. Know that you are responsible for a portion of those smiles. That's the type of relationships you can build with KCM by being a bridge builder and getting to right to share that with all your agents. Dave, I think we're going to go back to you and go with questions and answers and any input that you have on the presentation so far. Well, first of all, uh, absolutely fantastic presentation, lots of great insights. I, I absolutely love the goals that you outlined, and I, I love the, the takeaway as you close it. You know, what's your decision? Are you going to have a, a good year, or are you going to have the best year you've ever had? So I love these goals. I hope everybody reflects on how I opened the call. What kind of teacher do you want to be? And do you want to inspire? Do you want to be great? And I guess I ask everybody, you know, how do you know? if you're a great teacher, and if you're inspiring people. Inspiring people. And I, I think it really comes down to this. This is the bullseye. If the realtor actually says, wow, I never thought of that before. Or wow, what a great way to visually share that story. That, that's mission accomplished. To get home buyers, to get realtors, to say, wow, I never considered it that way before. And the, the visuals and the charts that you shared, to say they're exceptional is an understatement. 
first of all, it's, it, these are the problems, these are the questions that home buyers have, that realtors have, and you put them in pictures. And we all know that you know a picture says a thousand words, and it, it, it just delivers a lot more of a concise conversation. So I'm excited that you put these on mobile. Obviously, the fact that we promoted this call to our members and our community of mortgage professionals, we believe in what you do. I love that you're putting it on mobile. I, I especially love, and I want to break this down from a mortgage coach member perspective, the cost of waiting. I mean, great slide. Now you have it from a conceptual standpoint on your mobile device. You can, you can go through the appreciation rates, and then you can deliver an edge report. So creating that edge report, putting the link into the borrower. Uh, on the coaching call that we did a few weeks ago, uh, appreciate you taking this cost of waiting analysis and, apps and actually putting it into a learning. So for all you mortgage coach members on the call, if you put Harney into your app, you can take these concepts that they teach and put them into your edge report. So I just want to remind everybody, hopefully you're driving that. For any non-mortgage coach members on the call, you can, you can download our app for free. Just put in mortgage coach, and you, you know, whether it's an Android or an iOS device, and put in Harney. And you can see how Steve and team are bringing these things to life. And I can assure you that if you use Steve's solutions, you're going to wow more realtors, you're going to deliver more insight. And if you bring us into that conversation as partners, you're just going to blow people away. I mean, what an awesome tool to assure your success in 2014. So for Mortgage Coach members, I just want to remind the checklist because so many of you, uh, while you're delivering these to each and every borrower, make sure that you CC the realtor so they see what you're doing. Make sure you're showing telling with the app. And make sure you send out an edge video after every realtor meeting. And obviously, make sure you include one of Steve's solutions. So as we get into Q&A, I just want to get a quick heads up if there's any mortgage coach members on the or non mortgage coach members on the call and you'd like to get a demo just check this real quick give us a heads up that you'd like to take a look at edge so give us a quick heads up on that uh, we are going to do some Q&A we've got a few minutes to do that so thanks for voting I'm going to close that uh, I can't emphasize enough on what I think our partnership Steve you know it's such a one-two punch uh, and we both have a mobile solution so that while loan officers are out in the field with realtors, they can deliver that one-two punch. I, I can't emphasize enough, make an informed decision. Make sure you connect with Steve on his website. Uh, make sure you go to that today. Don't put it off. If you want to be a great teacher, this is a tool that is, is essential to greatness. I believe that what we do is essential to greatness, and I believe what Steve and team does is essential to making 2014 just best year ever. So, Steve, uh, I'm going to see if we got any hands raised. We have Wayne. Um, Wayne, I have unmuted you. Wayne, did you have a question or a comment? All right, Wayne, I remuted you. Um, Anna Smith, Anna Smith, you have been unmuted. Did you have a question or a comment? Uh, I did, and I enjoyed the presentation very much. I was wondering if he could uh, tell us, though, what the difference between the 999 subscription is and the 1995 a month for uh, KCM. Yeah, sure. The 1995 is actually was a realtor product that some mortgage professionals did get involved in uh, because they wanted to share it with their buyers. That's a single user uh, license. I Meaning, you could share it with your individual buyers. You cannot share it with your realtor partners to share with their buyers. You know, obviously, in 1995, we didn't make it to share with 25 real estate agents or 10 real estate agents. So if you're using KCM right now and you're sharing it with your realtor partners, you're really not in compliance with your, you know, what you purchased. So as more loan officers ask us, Steve, we want to share it. We want to legally share it with our agents. We want to give it to them. We, we, some people hold masterminds. We want to give out the slides. We want to load it onto their, their smartphones for them. I said, all right, well, I can't do that at 1995. Let's do it at 995 uh, a year. So you can, you know, give it to 20 agents if you want. And that's what Creative Bridge Builders, the loan officers coming back to me saying, I don't need a single user version. I need a multi user version so I can share it. Now, what came out after that, as more and more people got involved in it, they said, Steve, you know what else we need? 
We need you to help us, coach us, understand what the realtors are thinking right now. Steve, you know what else we need? We need to know, you know, what could really, right now, what is the thing that they would really blow the agent away? So what we've created over time, we brought Matt Dollinger in. Uh, we do the quarterly, uh, I personally do the quarterly coaching calls, strategy calls. Then Matt comes in three or four times a year and breaks down. This is how you use it with your agents. We also have a Facebook page for all the bridge builders where they share ideas back and forth. But basically, the 1995, and you can guess that by the price, is to be used by an individual with their particular buyers. If you want to make it a bigger thing, then you, the, the, legitimately you need to be a bridge builder. And there are other assets to being a bridge builder. All right. We don't Here's have like, KCM police to come check this to make sure you're doing it. So every okay. once in a while we do bump into somebody, and when we bump into them, we kind of say, listen, this ain't fair. You know it. I know it. Let's work this out. But uh, we don't have any police out there looking for you. So. All right. Hey, Anna, thank you for uh, participating. Any other takeaways? What was your big takeaway from the call so far? Um, I, I just I think the visuals are, are fantastic, and I think it's great uh, information for um, consumer direct strategies, which I think are also going to be more and more important this year. Good, good. And now are you uh, using Edge as regularly as you should be? <laughs> of course not, but Teddy Coral will attest to the fact that I've had private lessons with him and I'm getting better. All right. Well, hey, it's great That's hearing you guys. Very it's good. always good seeing you at events, Anna. Thank you. All right. Thanks for participating. Hey, Wayne, I'm going to give you another chance. Uh, did you have a question or a comment, Wayne? All right. All right. Okay. I'm going to, Steve, while you're giving a few comments, I'm going to look in the Q&A and see if I can bring a few more questions out. I've already seen a lot of good jobs. Uh, again, if you want to raise your hand, I might be able to bring in one more question in. Uh, but, Steve, any other kind of final thoughts as we wrap up today's call? Uh, the only thing that, that, I, that I would like to say is the, the, what I started the presentation with. I think 2014 for everyone on this call is going to be a phenomenal year. Uh, I do think there's going to be some confusion at the beginning. So what we're telling every one of uh, the agents that listen to us, and we hope that you tell the agents that listen to you, um, whoever dominates the first 90 days of 2014 is going to dominate the entire year. They have to be working right now to prepare for building an inventory, starting with the expires that thousands and every marketplace will expire on December 31st. Um, we want to make sure that they are building that inventory because if they dominate that first 90 days, they'll dominate 2014. And when we talked about it being on the turn, we really believe that whoever dominates 2014 from the mortgage side or the real estate side is going to dominate the rest of the decade. We're in a precipice right now. We're in a crucial time where people are going to say, who can I trust because I want to make a move? The agents who get that business up front, the agents who, again, dominate the next 90 days, will be the ones that are referred over and over again. And the people who have that great 2014, help a tremendous amount of buyers in the marketplace in 2014, that will carry them through the six years after that. Uh, and I can't say that any stronger than I just said it. I believe it to the soles of my feet. Yeah, I think that's a, a strong closing thought. I am going to um, both take a crack at an answer. We've got about a minute here, so I'm going to do it pretty quick. But one of the questions came in uh, was, what advice would you give loan officers entering the business looking to build relationships with realtors? So my, my answer is, first of all, I'm going to answer this not only to you who's new, but to all the loan officers that are on this call that have been in this business for a whole long time. And I asked that survey at the beginning, how good are you at delivering insight to realtors? And in my answer to the new guy, and my answer to everybody on this call, is take it to great. I mean, it really is a decision. It really is a discipline to become great at delivering insight to realtors. And you know, I believe passionately that Mortgage Coach and Edge is a fantastic way to do that using the mobile app. And I, I believe just as passionately that Steve, having him as a partner, being a member of his platform, and bringing insight to realtors, if you're new, go to great, and you could do it in a month with just discipline, practice, and, and, and taking these visuals and having mobile conversations where you're delivering insight and value to realtors. That's the path, my friend. 
So that's my answer to the new guy's question. And Steve, what are your closing thoughts as we wrap up the call? I'll say the same exact thing. I think that you need great content. You need Steve? a simple way to deliver it. So you, the great content we can get with the KCM and what you give in Mortgage Coach and the great delivery system is the edge. Uh, I'll just go, I'll you go back to a racing analogy. Hit the pedal hard now. And Mario Andretti, the great race car driver, said it best. If your car's not a little out of control, you're not going fast enough. Ladies and gentlemen, gas it right now. Invest in yourself, time, energy, and money. Invest in it. You're going to get the greatest return in 2014 you've gotten in the last decade. All right, guys. Well, hey, have a great week. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. And, Steve, thank you for being a wonderful partner. Uh, appreciate your leadership. Appreciate your content. And I look forward to a lot more calls and partnering together. I agree with you a thousand percent on that, Dave. And again, thank you for introducing me to so many people that care so much about you. I appreciate that. Everybody have a happy right. holiday. Take care, everybody.